ICT Foundation Nepal प्रस्तुत करता है। Huawei MNC Digital Nepal Conclave 2023। Good morning everyone, Namaskar Savelai। I'm glad to be here today at this gathering and uh, grateful for this opportunity to speak before you today. So my talk is going to focus on what kind of digital capability have we built in Nepal over the years. And since I belong to an industry where we provide broadband, I'm going to be a little bit biased towards that industry. So when we talk about uh, dig digitization, we normally talk about we need a digital infrastructure. So in today's day and age, that looks like having massive amounts of fiber. It includes having good mobility networks, uh, having data centers, having cloud computing. So these are the, this is the infrastructure on which applications can be hosted and built. Then you need digital services, uh, you, you know, whether it's deployed by government, governments or private institutions. These are services that solve some problem for the, com for the population and it's hosted normally on the digital infrastructure. And then of course, in a country like Nepal especially, there needs to be literacy. So people know, need to know how to access these services, how to use these services, how to use devices, how to use the internet, and, and that's the, the third pillar we see in, in digitization. So what does the digital infrastructure look like in Nepal today? Okay, and this is a little bit, uh, 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 you can see here, I don't know how this works. Okay, so we have uh, 130 licensed ISPs in Nepal. And we have been lobbying with the government to stop giving new licenses and to merge, to, to uh, force consolidation in the industry. Uh, but still, we have a lot of service providers, 45 are active. Uh, we have six mobile operators that are licensed, but only two are active. Um, the, the, the interesting numbers here are that we have 38 million mobile subscribers and we have around uh, uh, 2.3 million fiber to the home customers. So broadband penetration is quite good in Nepal. We have around 6.5, 6.6 million households, and we have 2.3 million fiber to the home connections. Uh, you know, bandwidth utilization is, is on a massive upward trend. Uh, there's around 1.8 terabits of international connectivity uh, and around 10 terabits of connectivity within the country. Um, and uh, we have six commercial data centers. One of them is tier three certified. The others are, uh, are just regular data rooms. Uh, and we have a very active internet exchange in the country. Uh, my company, Worldlink, we are currently in the process of building data centers across the country because we believe that uh, data is now getting regionalized and it needs to be closer to the consumer. Uh, and, and this is laid out on a map showing which are the major high density population areas in our country. So the data centers are, are situated in a way to cover those high density population centers in our country. So we have a plan to build 14 data centers. The first one, uh, the major tier three certified data center we're building is going to be in Kathmandu and the others won't be tier three certified but they will be high availability data centers. So what does the broadband sector look like at present? So there are, around 13 million internet users in Nepal today, uh, and uh, around 2.6 million households are connected. The industry, the broadband sector provides employment to more than 20,000 people. Uh, it's, uh, there's more than two, 25 billion rupees invested in this industry. Revenue is uh, more than 30 billion rupees, uh, uh, and uh, the internet traffic you can see is uh, nine, nine terabits of traffic. Uh, we, the broadband industry covers all the districts. It contributes around 8 billion rupees to, uh, in, in tax revenues to the government. So you can see it's a quite high proportion of the revenue uh, goes, to, goes in taxation. And uh, we are helping to address the digital divide. So we talk specifically about my company, Whirlink. We have 3.7 million users um, and 771,000 connected households. Uh, our revenue is around 9 billion rupees um, and uh, we carry around 3 terabits of traffic. Uh, we employ around 5,000, 5,500 people. In terms of market share, we have 34% market share of the broadband industry and around 40% of all internet traffic in the country is carried on our network. 
This is our journey over the past uh, 27 years. We started with the store and forward email services in 1995, and over the years we have tried various different access technologies. Uh, in 2012, we started uh, Ethernet services, and in 2014, we started doing fiber to the home. And now we have pretty much standardized on fiber to the home in, in our network. Uh, we don't do any other technology besides fiber to the home, except in some rural areas, we do fixed wireless access. And we also have a massive Wi-Fi deployment, a public Wi-Fi deployment um, to cover uh, various communities and provide uh, free, inter free internet service to those communities. So the current status of broadband in Nepal is uh, the growth is driven by FTTH, so the service providers are focused on deploying fiber and expanding that coverage to new areas. 94%, uh, you know, this is a very, uh, this is a figure to be proud of, 94% of all the fixed broadband connections in Nepal are fiber, and, and this is the highest in South Asia, maybe even higher than other parts of the world, um, maybe even higher than Southeast Asia, except for Vietnam. Uh, and w why did this happen in our country? Well, the major contributors are that we are very lucky that we, are, we don't have to go through very expensive and time-consuming right-of-way permits. You know, and, and, and the good part is it's expanded broadband, but there's a negative aspect to it, which you can see on the streets in our urban areas. There's a lot of wires that, that, are being, that have been deployed. There's low regulation. Uh, there, had, there has been a drop in the cost of fiber and related equipment. So fiber to the home has become more financially viable due to, due to drop in uh, the costs. And there's been a surge in demand for data. So especially with the arrival of OTTs uh, like uh, Facebook and YouTube, and more recently during pandemic TikTok, the demand for data has exploded in Nepal. And with fiber, we're able to meet that demand and, and, and serve the customers in a cost-effective way compared to mobile data. So it's estimated that we cover not just Whirling, but the industry covers 7 million home passes and with a 30% occupancy. Uh, it's 7 million because there's a lot of duplication in the network. So we don't cover all the households in the country, but there are altogether 7 million home passes deployed. And the ARPU is around 1,000 rupees today, uh, which includes television as well. So it includes a paid TV service. And the average speed today is around 200 Mbps. So it's quite healthy, the, the, the broadband scenario in Nepal, because uh, we are today covering, I'll show you in a later slide. Actually, I'll show you that slide now. So what does the penetration look like? And this is from... 2021 census. We had a very comprehensive census conducted in 2021. And what this shows is that if you talk about the, the uh, Mahanagar Palikas, which are our largest cities, uh, there's around 71% penetration of households' internet. So that's pretty high. So 71% of all households already have broadband in their homes. If we go to a village, in the village, it's, it's quite healthy as well. It's already at 21%. You know? And if we take a average number throughout the country, we are, we are at 38% broadband. And mind you, this is from 2021, and we're in 2003. So I'm pretty sure this has already crossed 40%. You know, maybe it would be around 41 42% today. So around 41 42% of all households in Nepal already have a broadband connection. and 95% of that is fiber. So pretty, pretty good penetration. According to data that's published by our regulator, NTA, the, the broadband penetration looks like this. In the mobility space, 91% uh, of users have internet in the country. And in the uh, fixed broadband space, it's, a, it's around 40%. So around 40% of all people in Nepal are connected to the internet through, uh, through fixed broadband and 94% 94 through mobility. And over the years, we have seen, uh, no surprise, you know, huge 
uh, growth in the demand for data as well, and if you see the number of devices. So in, in 2013, we would see approximately two devices per household connected, and today it stands at, at a little over five devices per household. So that just shows the huge adoption of devices in the households. The number of people in the household really hasn't changed. In fact, it's reduced. If you look at the census data, the number of the average household size has reduced, but the number of device count has increased. That's because of the affordability of devices and the adoption of digital technologies by people in the household. The bandwidth it's, itself has also gone up, so it's gone from 5 Mbps to around 300 Mbps. 300 Mbps is sort of like the, the high, higher end packages, and the total backbone traffic that we see has also gone up from something like 20 Gbps to over 9,000 Gbps today. So it's, it's been a huge astronomical growth in the industry over the, over the past decade. So, let, so we talk about, let's say, the cost of broadband in Nepal. So this is something that our policy makers uh, sometimes complain to us about that, oh, internet is expensive in Nepal. Well, if we, if we compare ourselves to global data, uh, Nepal ranks number eight in terms of the cost of broadband. So it's pretty, that's, that's quite healthy and something to be very proud of because Nepal usually ranks top 10 from the other side, but here we are top 10 from the better side. So we, we are actually number eight in terms of the cost of broadband and what, what this survey finds is that the average package per month is $9.46. It's cheaper than that. You know, $9.46 would equate to something around 1,300 rupees. The average cost is around 1,000 rupees today. So, uh, so it's actually, if, we would probably rank even less than eight uh, globally. Despite that, you know, we're always trying to see what, what can we do to make it more affordable, especially f as our focus moves to rural areas. In urban areas, the cost of deploying the network and providing the service is cheaper because you have economies of scale, you have density, and uh, people are also have better purchasing power. But when we go to less densely populated or sparsely populated areas, when we go to rural areas, then the challenge is A, the cost to deploy the service is more expensive because, there, because we have to build networks that cover sparsely populated populations. And the, the affordability rate also goes down. You know? So how do we handle that? So one of the big contributors to the cost that customers have to pay for the internet is taxation. And we have all these taxes that hit us when we provide service, but I would like to specifically focus on these. So around uh, three years ago, or is it four years now, uh, the government decided to impose an additional 13% tax on broadband. Uh, that is 13% on the, on the bottom, uh, on the cost of broadband means, uh, just like the VAT, it's, it's a direct taxation on, on the pricing. Uh, we, we managed to lobby the government to make it 50% by dividing the cost of internet into two components the internet cost and the cost of providing support. Uh, and that way reduce it to 6.5%. But we still think that this should be removed because it didn't exist three, four years ago. It was something that was just added on. And it's something that the, the customer pays directly from their pockets. Then we have a 13% VAT, which everybody, which is uh, applicable to all products and services. On top of that, there is a 6% taxation that comes because we have, there's a 4% royalty so on our revenue, we have to pay a 4% royalty and a 2% RTDF, uh, and we would like this to be reduced. Uh, corporate tax was uh, uh, shockingly increased on broadband. Um, so the corporate tax that we are imposed on is 30%, whereas 25% is the standard income tax that companies pay in Nepal. Uh, and on top of that, uh, the equipment that we provide the customer in building the network or connecting them, the duty went on up on that as well. You know, so it's like, it's like 15, the average is like 15% now, we feel that it should be dropped to 5% in line with other IT products in the country. Because all these things indirectly are borne by the customer. You know, we, we just uh, pass it on. You know, we, cannot, we cannot absorb all these costs. So for us to bring down the cost of internet and serve rural populations, we need these kinds of uh, 
progressive mindset in line with what we just heard from the prime minister and minister you know that they should their actions should speak louder than their words unfortunately that doesn't happen uh, the the words speak louder than the uh, the actions uh, and and this would actually show that the actions speak louder than the words if they actually do something about these taxes because it directly conflicts with their digital nepal initiative so uh, one of the focuses that we now need to have uh, as an industry and as a nation is how do we expand broadband and make it more uh, uh, more quality and and more affordable in rural areas and so uh, so i'm going to talk a little about rural broadband uh, one of the good things that happened is some years back our regulator was able to deploy our USO fund, which we also call RTTF, Rural Telecom Development Fund, for expanding rural broadband networks. Uh, they also gave out projects to build the backbone to connect these different, these, these dispersed uh, cities throughout the country. Unfortunately, these backbone projects are all stuck for various reasons. They have not been able to build the networks, the super highways to connect our country, which has uh, hampered us which has hampered the growth of broadband and it has disenfranchised our rural citizens especially from broadband. So in rural areas, service quality is, is not up to the mark, it's poor because fiber cuts happen and it, the restoration times are much longer. We got a project from NTA to deploy fixed wireless access in the most rural part of our country in the Karnali region and I'll talk more about that later. So I believe that the way to go is to open up the 700 megahertz spectrum, which is specifically just for rural connectivity. 700 megahertz spectrum does not serve urban populations. It will, be, it will give good coverage for rural populations. And of course, the taxes should be, should be brought down, uh, especially if for rural broadband uh, connectivity to make it more affordable. So the policy recommendation that I, w I was going to, I was planning to talk about, but it seems like our minister has already left, is uh, we need an infrastructure license for fiber networks. Today, anybody can go and build fiber networks, and the result of that is we have massive duplication, and th that duplication is visible in all towns and cities of Nepal. You just need to look up and look at the poles, and there's massive duplication of infrastructure that can be contained by having an infrastructure company that is tasked with building these networks and leasing out the capacity to service providers like Worldlink and others. This would also reduce the cost because that deployment means massive wastage. The other policy recommendation I have is, I talked about is reduced taxes. We should not be taxing an industry that we believe as the Honorable Minister said, is going to massively contribute to our economy, we should not be taxing it the way we tax alcohol and tobacco. We should open up more spectrum for, for broadband. 2.3 gigahertz has already been earmarked for broadband. Unfortunately, for the past 13 years, it has not been auctioned. So it is sitting, not being used, whereas it could have been deployed and benefited the, the, the nation by now. And lastly, all the, the whole te telecom industry depends on our utility company, Nepal Electricity Authority, for long distance wireless, uh, long distance fiber connectivity, because they have put fiber on their poles. Unfortunately, they increased the cost of this by more than fivefold recently. And that is directly, again, contributing to the costs to make broadband expensive. Reducing those, reducing that cost in line with what it used to be in the past would help the industry massively and, and would help with uh, preparing Nepal for a digital economy. I would like to end by showing you this video about our work in Karnali. It's just one minute. There is some nice audio in it, but we'll be do without that now.
So this is completely uh, fixed wireless access. Uh, we had we we ventured into some parts of this province where a vehicle had not even been there before. So ours was the first vehicle to be there. And we were greeted uh, with garlands. Our people were felicitated for bringing connectivity. Uh, most of these areas don't even have mobile coverage where we have deployed internet today. Thank you very much.